this is a bit of a tutorial about spark plugs now there are lots of different types of spark plugs and different features like for instance this is a spark plug with quite a long thread so that's called long reach and let's see if we can sit it there you can see that the insulator is sticking up quite a long way as opposed to let's find a different one this one here where it's got a very short reach and the insulator and electrode are right down in there the thing about how much the electrode and the porcelain stick out of the plug relates really to how the plug behaves in oily conditions the one that sticks out a long way will run hotter than the one that's stuck down in so this one will transfer the heat away from the electrodes quicker so it will run cooler than that one so on a two stroke engine where you have oil you want the electrodes stuck out so therefore it will get hotter and burn the oil away that's that as we can see here we've got different diameter of threads like for instance that one and that one so we've got reach diameter of thread and whether it's a hot running or cool running plug now for chainsaws we normally this is what is it a BMP R74A they're all a sort of middling sort of size the threads are fairly short so it's quite a short reach plug but the main things with spark plugs as I found are people just don't quite understand where they're coming from so with a spark plug if your chainsaw is acting up the first thing to do would be to take a plug out of a saw that's running fine and try it if that solves the problem initially then you know that the plug's the problem but putting a different plug in may only uh, restore things for a short while because there might be underlying factors that are causing the plug to pack up one of them being a blocked air filter so if the plug is dry but black and sooty then there's a good chance that it's running the whole machine's running rich so therefore look at the air filter and give the air filter a good cleaning out now, then it may be that somebody's been twiddling with the carburetor settings so go back to basics and it will say on the side of the saw how many turns out each the high and the low screw should be so that's that when we used to do a lot of training uh, we used to get people turning up on day one the boss has sent me with this saw and you can almost guarantee that it's the roughest saw of the lot so you do day one of maintenance second day the saw wouldn't run properly and it's basically because it's been set up to run with blocked air filters mucky plugs etc so there you go if the plugs white it means that you're not getting enough petrol and there's several reasons for that one being a blocked fuel filter or partially blocked so hook the uh, filter out of the tank with a bit of bent wire and either replace it or if it's a 20 mile round trip to go and get another filter on the still ones you can pop the plastic case out and then you can blow the element out with an airline that will save you 20 miles and a fortune and an hour's driving so that's that the other one would be again carburetor settings or failing that could be that your diaphragms are getting weak and therefore it's not pumping enough fuel so white is lean sort it out 
because if you continue running it lean A it won't run right and B your saw will run hot black too much fuel so therefore your saw won't be running right and using a lot of fuel the proper colour should be sort of a, a beigey light chocolate brown that's that one that tells you from the colours the, the other thing to do with a spark plug is just to check there are two electrodes let's get a different plug so you can see it better there's this bendy one here and then there's the central electrode of course the central electrode is surrounded with porcelain and there's a big deep gap down there between the, between the inside of this threaded bit and the porcelain if down there it's full of carbon uh, it's very easy for the HT, the high tension spark, to track across the porcelain through the carbon and to earth. You want the spark to go between the central electrode and this bent electrode. So, have a go at cleaning out round there, but if it's that bunged up, change it. The gap is important and that is the gap between the central electrode and the bent electrode. As a spark plug gets used, both electrodes slowly erode, slowly wear away. So from time to time you've got to set the gap. And there are various things for setting the gap. I've got this delightful little here, AC plug. Uh, gap setting gauge and along here this is tapered in thickness and there's the different sizes and you would put that in the gap and just move it along until we're about there and that's um, 36 thou well that's fine if you're working thousandths of an inch but um, a lot of monu modern manuals they talk about millimetres. So this is a set of feeler gauges, metric ones, and each of these gauges have a, has a different thickness. And if you don't have the right thickness, then you put the two appropriate ones together. Like for instance, if you didn't have 0.6 of a mil, you'd have 0.5 and 0.1. Anyway, this is 0.6, and we'll pop that in there. And as you can see, that gap's a bit wide. Yep. So most chainsaws run on a 0.6. So what you do then is you just tap it. A bit more. Right. Ah, blown it. Closed it up too much. Now you've got to be careful not to interfere with the central electrode or the porcelain so you just got to get a little screwdriver in there you don't leave her on the porcelain you just open it up a little bit gone a bit too far I'm being a bit gentle now. There we go. Dead right. Set in the gap. Years ago, you used to have uh, plug files. Because this central electrode, the spark comes from the outside corner. Imagine um, that's the central electrode and it's got this sharp corner all the way around the outside. So therefore, the spark would come from there. Well, over time, it rounds off because it's being eroded. And so therefore, years ago, you used to file the top of the central electrode and just to bring it nice and square again so you get a better spark. Well, modern machines, modern ignition systems, they provide a beefier spark, so we don't have to be quite so fundamentalist nowadays. So having set the gap and check for the colours for your carburation and your fuel supply then put it back in but before you do check this ferrule on the end and I don't know if I've got one that unthreads here yeah there it's gone 
this little ferrule. Now, sometimes, of course, a HT lead on old machines has just got a, a fitting on the end that fits over that, and then you put the ferrule back on. But on all chainsaws, the cap fits over that ferrule. But I looked at a chainsaw last week, and when I took the plug cap off, all you had was that. I thought, that's not right. And then delving into the plug cap where the pair of snipe nose pliers, I pulled out the ferrule. And obviously this saw had been used for a while with this vibrating, and all the threads had gone in there, so it just pushed on really loosely. So that's obviously a really quite a bad contact, wobbling about like that. Yeah. So instantly that plug, throw it away. Yes. Put a ferrule on, make, the fer make sure the ferrule's tight with a pair of pliers. You don't want it loose like that because the vibration, over time, it'll undo. Coming back to other plug problems, we were doing a wind blow course five years ago, something like that. And one of the people who came on it was saying, this saw's all right, but it's just not running right. He says he's been serviced, which is always a bit of a, oh yeah, by whom? Anyway, so we took the plug out. I said, let's have the plug out. Took the plug out, and it looked fine. It looked absolutely fine, not a problem. Then I turned it upside down, and the central electrode inside the porcelain it just dropped down so it touched the bent electrode so that center electrode was not um, contacting properly so we changed the plug and then reset the carburetor because he'd been fiddling with the carburetor good as new again this is not the be and end all of plugs but it's a good start i hope this helps and if you're doing an NPTC uh, maintenance and cross-cut assessment soon, it will certainly help you to give you some underpinning knowledge.